All right, so here is a quarter inch 20 bolt, which the measurement doesn't really matter because we're gonna build it from the ground up in Shaper. I'm gonna put it in this vise just to make it easier to handle and photograph. Center it for the image. Then we'll just put a piece of paper underneath just to make it easier to see. Contrast, take our camera and focus on the bolt like that and take a picture. Make sure that the image is well squared with the table, which in this case I'm not. Then we need at least one measurement for reference for the image. In this case it's 6.1. Next we will measure, we will span across multiple threads. The more threads we catch the better. So here we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 gaps and over 7 gaps we've got nine millimeters. Perfect. Then we want to measure the diameter of the interior shaft. Let's see. 4.3. Let's try that again to be sure. It would be hard to measure this part. You have to try different methods different times. In this case, 4.8. All right. Then we take our image and we just clean it up a little, rotate it the right way, crop it in. After we crop it in, we want to make sure that the thread is square. So then we just use the lines here to make sure that all the threads are lined up with the grid. That seems about right. Save that and send it to the iPad. All right, so let's put our measurements to paper. What we have is the diameter of the bolt, which was 6.1 millimeters. We also got the interior diameter, which was 4.8 millimeters. And we measured across one, two, three, four, five, six, seven teeth, nine millimeters. Now, to get the width between two teeth, we have to do nine divided by seven equals. 1.285 and then to get the length of one of the threads we have to do 6.1 millimeters minus 4.8 millimeters equals uh, 1.3 millimeters and we divide 1.3 by 2 equals 0 0.65 millimeters. So now we have our measurements. Now we can go to Shaper. Alright, now that we're in Shaper, we'll start with one of the methods, which is to use the measurements that we got start with creating the center shaft our diameter was 4.8 which means that's 2.4 in radius let's loft that right away then we can go straight to the front view and start drawing one of the threads we said it was 1.285 wide the 
thread was 0 0.65 long. So we could draw that out right away. Remove the center. Reorient ourselves here. Select the face. Make the center spline axis visible. Go to more. Select revolve. Now that we already have the face selected, we then select the center axis that we will revolve around. Now the height that we want is what we measured at 9 millimeters and the angle of rotation right now we have 360 which is one rotation. If we take our calculator, the answer is already there. Take our calculator, we had seven rotations that we wanted, so seven times 360. 2520. So let's input that here. And we now have our thread. Click done. All we have to do now here is do a union between these two. Done. So that's using our first method. Our next method is using the image and one measurement as reference. So let's go here, front view again. We go import image photos, select it. Move that off to the side for now. Done. Now let's sketch a rectangle using the center option. And define the width by 6.1, so that's what we measured. Let's just bring this up a little bit. And then we take our image and we center it. Slide just as best as we can. And then we select the scale tool bring this up until at least one of the edges touches. So right now it's the right side. And I think it touches there. Once one edge touches, take the center of the scale tool and bring it to that edge and continue scaling until the other edge touches. And I'd say we have to zoom in a little bit to get more granularity. seems about right. I think it'd go a little further than that. Well, let's just call it that. All right. Next thing we'll do is make the trough of one of these threads line up with this line. Again, zoom in a bit to get more granularity. There. That seems about right. And that will allow us to then start defining our threads. Um, before we could get the width of a thread, we need to define the interior diameter of the shaft. So let's select the offset tool, take one of the walls, bring it in here, and then refine that. that seems about right. Let's do this. Yeah. Do the same thing on the other side, see if it matches. It should. Perfect. That's probably just because of the image that we took. Now that we have that the width, we want to figure out the, uh, well now that we have the length of the thread, now we want to figure out the width of each thread. So let's take the offset tool again, and find the center of the next trough. Seems about right. And to validate that, we'll multiply it over multiple times to see if we get any drift. Do 
Let's just figure out how many of the threads on one side are we going to count. I'm going to start from this one, start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to this one. Let's calculate or measure the distance between these two. At the bottom here, we see the parallel between these two lines is 8.75. So now we can start drawing our triangle. Let's trim this out. And we can start to revolve that. Select our face. Go more. Revolve. Select the axis of rotation. Our height, we just figured out, was 8.75. And we already know that 360 times 7 is 2520. Okay, well, sometimes I get this error. So let's just change that by 1 degree, 2521. Uh, there. There's our thread. Then, of course, you just create your interior shaft and you do a union between the two. So those are my two methods. Might not be the most efficient. I don't know how other people do it, but that's how I do it. Okay, let's just make this transparent. You can see how they match up. So voila, I hope you liked my little tutorial, and have a nice day.